Barry and Bailey, thank you for taking time to meet with us today. You're Pleasure. very welcome to Dublin. Thank you. Um, so in Mr. Turner, you're playing the role of Mrs. Booth, yes. who eventually becomes the romantic, the prime romantic interest of, of J.W. Turner's life. Um, when it, you first came to the role, did you know anything about Mrs. Booth or indeed anything about Turner's no. private life at all? I knew, I, I've always been a fan of his work, Turner's work, and I knew he was a working class Londoner and that's really pretty much all I knew about him. Um, and so when Mike asked me to take on Mrs. Booth, I just started reading everything I could find. There's not a great deal known about her um, and accounts vary, you know, from some people who say, well, she was just this illiterate, money-grabbing, garrulous, terrible sort of woman. How could he have the great artist have possibly spent time with her. But other biographers um, have said, well, she, she was warm and there are accounts of the artists. Ruskin, the art critic, was very nice about her. After Turner died, he went to visit and he said she gave him sherry and cake and a few paintings. You know, <laughs> so, and obviously Mike and I decided to go for the latter interpretation. In a way, it was quite nice that not that much was known about her because um, we were free to invent... Her as as we wished, really. Mm. Yeah. It is a very warm and touching performance, it's supposed mm. to reflect what she meant to Turner in his later years. But in terms of what was in the script as regards his relationship with, say, his other mistress, uh, were you surprised by some of the more scurrilous and scandalous aspects of well, his life? I knew about them because I'd, <laughs> I'd, I'd read about it. And, of course, we don't really cover the first part of his life when he was with Sarah Danby, with mm. whom he had his two children that he later... Um, he didn't really deny them, but I think sometimes he just wasn't in the mood to talk about them. Mm. Um, it's, it's interesting. He did certainly like to compartmentalise his life, and nobody knows what went wrong with that relationship. Um, she was the widow of a great friend of his. So she was really his partner for the first half of his adult life and then Mrs Booth for the second part and of course there must have been a lot of other women in the middle and, and he there were a lot of erotic paintings he made that Ruskin destroyed after he died because he thought well we can't have people knowing that the great man was up to this sort of thing you know? mm. so uh, who knows so, so, no I wasn't I wasn't surprised um, and then of course as the film depicts nobody really knows whether or not he might have had a sexual relationship with his housekeeper. Um, that, that's sort of the film's in, invention. But mm. she certainly did have this terrible skin disease. Um, and certainly she didn't know about Mrs Booth. It is true when you see her go, you know, without mm. giving away the end of the film. But all when that is, the, the actual events of it are, are what really happened. Mm. Um, so no, I mean, he was pretty boho and... I'm not testing it. I wasn't really surprised. Okay. So then when it came to the part, or getting the part, uh, presumably um, Mike came to you and said, would you like to play Mrs. Booth? Is, is that it? Or did you that's go through it? That's it. Because <laughs> <Yeah, that's laughs> I mean, we first worked together in 1980. Mm. So and um, yeah, he just said, well, okay, I'd like you to be in this and I'd like you to play Mrs. Booth. And she was his, and I didn't know anything about her. Um, and I mean, I, it only takes a nanosecond, less than that, to say yes to Mike Lee if he asks you on board something. I'm, I'm happy to... Like Vera Drake, I think I appear for about 20 seconds, and that's fine too. <laughs> you know, I, and then I've had lovely parts. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I would never say no. Mm -hmm. It took me no time at all to say yes. Thank you very much. Um, well, I'm fascinated by kind of the process by which Lee actually... Com brings a script together because it's very different from most any other director or writer you can mm. think of. Um, so how, one, once you accepted the part, how did the process go? Well, I can't sort of get it, all of it. <laughs> for our Even a snapshot. Here, but just a snapshot is really, you work with him initially on a one-to-one -one basis to get the character going and you bring him all the research you can do. And we had a, a great researcher working with us as well to, who helped put us on to stuff if we had questions, and then you start to create a life for those characters, an invented life. So you populate your imagination with their early family, where they went to school, if they went to school, where they lived, what happened to them. And 
then you start working with the other actors and you, through a process of improvisation, um, you gradually come to a point where you can start to sort of distill particular scenes mm. and you do that without ever seeing anything written down. Um, from an improvisation, you will gradually with him refine and define the dialogue until by the time the cameras roll, it's as if it were scripted, but you just haven't seen it. You've learned it on your feet and it's very precise. And also because you've done all this background stuff with him, you feel wonderfully safe on set because, you know, sometimes when you turn up on a film set and you've been sent the script and you've been asked to do it and you think, oh, I wonder if, this, if I'm doing it the way they wanted me to do it. <laughs> you, know, you can feel very insecure. Um, but you don't feel insecure with Mike. You, you know exactly what you're doing and because mm. you've created it with him together. So, And as you say, there isn't a whole lot known about Mrs Booth. No. So then presumably during the rehearsal process and then during filming um, Lee and you and the rest of the cast have been very open to improvisation and perhaps even diverting from what history is known. Yes, I, I don't think anywhere we have created something that definitely didn't happen. Um, I mean, there is, you know, it's whether or not he actually strapped himself to the mast of the ship in the snowstorm. Nowadays, art historians say, well, probably, perhaps he didn't do that. But he does in our film. And, of course, it's not a documentary. It is a film. Um, so, yes, we, we sort of filled in the gaps, but in a way that we felt was truthful and honest. And we didn't put in anything just for the sake of it. We just put in stuff that seemed probable to us as if it was the way we think it would have been. Mm. Um, and without actually going back in a time machine, we'll never know how close we've got to mm. the reality. But well, Whether it's true or not, the, the, sh the shot of him on the yeah. ship, it's a stack it's great shot. Like that, Absolutely yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then just since you are the, kind of the, the leading female character in the film... Um, what do you feel about the film's representation of women? I mean, there's a few key relationships Turner has there, all very different. Yes, um, and of course, one of them, you know, the, the 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 figure that sort of echoes through this film, of course, is the mother who did in fact die in Bedlam, and she was apparently a very violent woman. So, I think perhaps in early childhood, without being too Freudian about it. Um, Goodness knows what he'd experienced as a small boy with that tragic figure. So she's sort of there, I think. In terms of the representation of women, I think Mike Lee's always great with female characters. He's always um, wonderful at depicting women. And, and yes, there are three very different relationships, plus, of course, his relationship with the scientist Mary Somerville, which is beautifully played by Leslie Manville, um, you know, and of course, she isn't, he treats her as an absolute more than his equal, which she was. You know, she was a great pioneering scientist of her time. No easy feat for a woman. Um, and then that very tender little moment you see him talking to Mrs. Ruskin, which mm -hmm. there is another film about that relationship. <laughs> That's a whole other kind of can of worms. But, you know, he, he had his tender side, Turner, um, at least in our depiction of him. And the, the very touching courtship of, of Mrs. Booth, really. Uh, you know, it's very nice to see on screen, I hope, uh, a love affair that isn't just about the young, you know. <laughs> people of a certain age can also have romance and, and a love affair. Mm. Um, mm. Very good. OK, well, uh, thank you for talking with That's us right. today, Marion. It's been <laughs> a pleasure. to see you again. Um, you too. Yeah, see, see you down the BFI one day. Well, no, I, actually, I, I do 